Hi all, today we are going to discuss about the problem of image classification. As most of you know, image classification is one of the most happening areas in the field of data science. So uh, the applications of uh, these image classifications range from our day-to-day -day activities of unlocking a phone using face lock or fingerprint to uh, capturing uh, objects in a video, for example, uh, in their, uh, during, the, during the traffic signals using cameras to capture high-speed vehicles. So the applications of uh, this image classification are uh, many. To continue further, um, this particular exercise has been split into two videos. Um, the first video which we are going to cover today, uh, we are going to perform the image classification exercise using Keras uh, with the TensorFlow at the back end. The second video uh, is going to be using a cloud platform, uh, the GCP, uh, and using the uh, product called the AutoML to perform the same exercise. So uh, the data set which we are going to use for this particular exercise is the Chess Images dataset, which can be downloaded from the Kaggle called the Chessman Image dataset. So it comprises of six directories. Totally, uh, uh, let me just open uh, the downloaded files. So the uh, files have been downloaded from Kaggle. And as seen here, we are having close to uh, six folders. And for example, in the Bishop folder, we are going to have the images of Bishop pieces. Similarly, in the King folder, we are going to have the images of the King pieces. So this is the data set on which we are going to perform the exercise of image classification. So it's a multi-class classification problem because essentially when a new image is coming up, um, the uh, model which we are going to build is, is going to classify that image into one among these six pieces. So let's quickly jump into how our data set or the code actually is going to look at look like. So First thing, as I had mentioned, this exercise we are going to make use of Keras. So we are importing the necessary libraries to achieve the same. And uh, I have mounted my uh, Google Drive. Uh, essentially, what I did was I uploaded uh, the Kaggle dataset into my Google Drive, as seen here, into the six folders corresponding. And from the Google Drive, uh, now we are going to split them into training and validation data sets. So it's similar to any of the other classification problems which we earlier dealt with in this course. So what happens here is the Keras is having an inbuilt uh, function called the preprocessing, where we are going to specify uh, the location from where the images have to be picked up and also the ratio, the training to validation data set ratio. Here we specified 0.2 as the uh, uh, as, uh, as a ratio. So as seen here, we totally have 552 files which belong to six classes out of which 80% of them, that is around 442 files are going to be used for uh, training and the remaining 110 files are going to be used for validation. So let's quickly uh, see a sample of the images, how they look like. So as seen here, uh, I prepared a uh, uh, we are trying to display nine images from the data set which we have picked up randomly. For example, this is one of the images of the rook which is available in our data set. This is one of the pawns which is available. So on the size of the uh, data set which we have uh, at each of the uh, chess piece level in our training data set is this. For example, we have about 71 images corresponding to the bishop folder. So then comes the actual uh, place in Keras where we are going to build a neural network, a convolutional neural network to kind of uh, help us to classify these particular images, basically to build an image classifier. So as seen here, we have multiple terms like the convolution, 2D, uh, padding and activation, etc. So before actually going in depth about this particular code, let us quickly uh, go through what exactly a convolution neural network is. So this is the basic uh, architecture uh, which we can imagine of a convolutional neural network. So we have an input image. It passes through multiple layers of convolutions and pollings before actually having a flattened out format from which we have a softmax activation function which kind of classifies it. So as seen here, uh, the entire process of convolution and pooling is has come under the part of feature learning. So essentially what this convolution and pooling does is for every image which is coming as an input, uh, from a system's perspective, it is just uh, pixels. Each image comprises of pixels. So essentially what we're doing is from those pixel entities of the uh, pixel intensities of the image, the convolution and pooling layers are trying to learn the features 
which will help them in classifying the particular input image to one of the eight target classes. So let's go in, in detail about how this entire process happens out. Before going there, let's see what actually the definition of convolution is. So based on the Wikipedia definition as seen here, convolution is a mathematical operation on two functions that produces a third function that expresses how the shape of one is modified by the other. So this particular line, how the shape of one is modified by the other is the key takeaway. So as seen here, uh, we have two functions, f and g, according to the definition of convolution. So now let's see what exactly those two functions are. So this is an example which is created uh, for understanding what a convolution is. And uh, so the entire process of this feature extraction or feature engineering is done by uh, kind of reducing the input uh, image pixels to a more condensed form. So this is achieved by the convolution layer and the pooling layer. So let's see what each layer does. So let's take an example of an input image, which is a 4 cross 4 uh, pixel intensity as it has. So let's assume this is a 4 cross 4 image. It's a 4 cross 4 image. Assume it's a grayscale image for the sake of simplicity. So a 0 corresponds to a totally black pixel and a 255 corresponds to a white pixel. Then we bring in something called the filter. So essentially what this filter does is it kind of runs like a torch. So in this case uh, here what we're looking at is a 3 cross 3 filter. So what it does is it kind of runs across the particular input image uh, pixel intensities we have and it tends to create a condensed output. So essentially based on the definition of our convolution, this is our first function on which we are running a filter to identify the different patterns within that particular image. Uh, I kindly request uh, you to uh, read about something called the Sobel filters which help in identifying edges in each of the image. So let's see what exactly this filter does. So as seen here, uh, so as I had mentioned, convolution is a kind of, uh, what you call, we do a mathematical operation on two functions so that we are going to have a third function. So here for these uh, two matrices we have here, we are going to do a dot product. So first thing is we'll be picking up uh, the first nine data points. And for those data points, we'll be running the filter on top of that. And we have the corresponding dot product result. As I said, it will be our continuous running torch. So next, we'll be picking up the next nine values and we'll be calculating the dot product. And uh, similarly, the third uh, matrix, the third batch within the input image, which we are going to do. And finally, the last one. So in this way, we are going to create one condensed output by running a filter across the input uh, image matrix we have with different pixel intensities. So in this way, what we are trying to do is we are essentially trying to condense the input image by making the uh, network understand the features it needs to pick. Fine. So then we have something called the uh, padding exercise. So what exactly is padding? So as seen in the previous example, from a 4 cross 4 input image, we are getting a 2 cross 2 output. What if the user wants to have the same output size as that of the input. That is the output also should be a 4 cross 4 matrix. So we have something called the padding exercise. So essentially padding exercise can be thought of as uh, balancing it out to have the same output matrix. So it's just adding additional zeros to our input image uh, matrix. So this is one way of uh, a padding exercise. So as seen here, Essentially, we had converted uh, this 4 cross 4 matrix into a 6 cross 6 matrix. And then when we run the filter across it, we are going to have a 4 cross 4 output. This essentially is called the padding exercise. Fine. So now, uh, so the combination of uh, running this entire exercise of running a filter across the input image matrix and trying to get a condensed output is a part of the convolution layer. So then we have something called the uh, pooling layer. So what exactly pooling layer is? Pooling layer, it's kind of further condenses the uh, output which we have received in the earlier layer. So essentially the reason behind this is when an image is given, the uh, intuition of uh, the neighboring pixels having similar values 
is high. So essentially, we are using pooling layer. We are going to uh, scrap the redundant information which we already have about a particular pixel. So let's assume that this is the output which we have for one of the convolution layer uh, which we had in the previously. So let's assume that this is the output which we received. So when we specify a pooling layer of uh, two cross two. Uh, with the objective function of maximum. So what it does is for every two cross two matrix, it will pick the maximum value. So as seen here, it will first will pick the first four values as a two cross two matrix and picks 80 as the maximum. Similarly, for the next six, it will pick it. So this way, this is the two cross two final max polling output we have. So in this way, this is the this is essentially what the conversion layer does. So going back previously. So this is how the various features are extracted based on the pixel intensities we have for the input image. And final output of these entire layers is going to be, we are going to have a one dimensional flattened output. So essentially what this flattened output corresponds to is, let's assume that in our example, we are having uh, six classes. So this flattened output is going to have uh, six values corresponding to each of the class. On top of that flattened value, when we are applying a softmax function, we get uh, we have the probabilities associated with each of those values. So essentially, what happens is the softmax essentially will be associating a probability for each of the output classes. So when let's say in this example where the input image is a car, so my final output after the softmax activation function is going to have six probability values. Uh, I mean, uh, with the intuition behind this is a car, the car is going to have the highest probability. So let's say an example, let's say it's 0.7. And uh, since car, truck and van have similar uh, characteristics, for example, the number of tires, etc., these are also going to have uh, less probability values, for example, very less like 0.1 or 0.05, etc. So the final output classification for this input image is going to be the class which is having the highest probability value in its output. So this is how essentially how a convolution neural network works. So with this intuition, let's jump into the code. So we are specifying a convolution uh, with 32 convolutions, a convolution there with 32 convolutions and a filter size of 3 cross 3. And we have mentioned something called the padding as same. Essentially what we are saying is the input size and the output size are going to remain the same. Similarly, we are adding one more convolution layer with 64 convolutions and we are having the third convolution layer with 128 convolutions. So essentially, this is what we are doing for the feature learning aspect. We have prepared three convolution layers and corresponding three pooling layers. Then we are flattening it out and we have given the softmax function for their activation. So essentially what happens now? So this is the uh, uh, architecture of the neural network which we had used for this particular exercise. And uh, we're going to use the categorical cross entropy. The reason being, this is used when we have a multi-class classification problem. And the metric which we are interested in is the accuracy. So we have specified uh, the number of iterations as eight. And for these eight epochs, we let's see what is the validation accuracy. So as seen here, the validation accuracy is ranging from 0.16 till 0.38. So uh, not really a great uh, classifier we had built. So let's quickly plot them out to see how it is varying between the training and validation data sets. So as seen in the training data set, uh, as the number of uh, epochs are increasing, the accuracy is increasing. However, in my validation data set, that's not the case. So it's a matter of overfitting the data in our training uh, data set. So this can be uh, thought of as either one, we had built a complex network where we can reduce one of the conversions and see how the performance is. And also uh, the number of uh, data points which we have correspond to each of the images may be less. So we can increase the data size for training aspect. We can also draw a confusion matrix for the images which we have. Uh, for example, for this particular example, when we plotted the confusion matrix as seen here, most of them are getting classified as uh, bishops. So let's say uh, for this uh, bishop, 10 of them have been classified as bishops, but whereas about uh, six of them have been misclassified. So this is uh, an example of how we had built a uh, yes, convolution neural network using Keras. And uh, how we use the same to kind of build an image classifier. How about, uh, so how about without actually knowing uh, how to build this neural network, we kind of have a click and, uh, click and play tool to achieve the same image classification uh, which, we, which we did right now. 
that's essentially what uh, the GCP auto ML does for us. And uh, th th the next video will be covering how uh, GCP auto ML can be used for performing the image classification. Thank you.